Today we are opening a brand new series called The Missing Link. There is a piece missing that would connect this chain and make it perfect. But before we talk about what that missing link is, since it's kind of a mystery, I want to tell you how important it is to have every piece when you are doing any project. But one day, one of our one of the wonderful people around here, they called us up and they said, hey, we've got a key lime pie for you. I want to bring it over to your house. And we're like, yum. Yeah. Now, Two words. Most bring it. Bring it. Bring it, bring it over. <laughs> bring it. And so, um, man, we were excited. Brad and I got some Starbucks coffee. That's our thing. And we're like, bring it on. So we have one piece of pie because we're, we're going to like savor it, right? So we have one piece of this awesome pie and we're, yes. just, we're just savoring it the whole time. And then our kids come home. They took the pie out to our shop and Brad and I didn't even know they were gone. We were at the table working. They took the pie and like they snuck out of the house. They, they didn't mind to get plates right. or I think they got one spoon. I think they used their hands. No, like a bunch of no savage forks. Beasts. They snuck outside. They snuck into the shop and up into the loft and they ate the entire They ate the whole pie with pie. their hands. The entire thing. I mean, it looks like we're uh, these abusive parents that shelter them from anything in the world that's anything But if tasty. you see our kids, <laughs> <laughs> if you see my children, they're not starving. You know that. But... So Man. we all of a sudden, a little bit later, Brad goes, hey, where's that pie? Let's have another piece of that pie. Yeah. And I said, Get, it's in the fridge. So he goes to the fridge and it's not there. And so by, by this time, like, I'm like, I don't really want any. I don't feel very good. I'm not, I'm not feeling so good. He was like, really? I want some pie. And so the kids come in. And he's like, do you guys know where that pie went? You guys and seen it, that pie And anywhere? they're all going, I don't know. My tummy kind of hurts. My tummy hurts, my Dad. Tum my tummy hurts. It We're does. like, why is everybody tummy hurt? Man, What's going we must on? Have, like have some bad water. Our family doesn't hardly ever get sick. So what's going on? So we blew it off. We realized the pie thieves had taken the pie. We figured out the mystery and we were like, okay. Well, a little bit later, like a day or two goes by, we kind of all got sick. And a couple days go by and the same person that brought us that wonderful pie. My which, mom. Ah! I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally was not going to tell. <laughs> I thought the people needed to know. Wow. I'm sorry. You're not getting another I'm sorry. pie, babe. I'm sorry. Well, she'll remember next time. Go ahead and tell them the rest of the story. It's really good. <laughs> Your son, it's, it's not good. mine. <laughs> so we are sitting at a ball game, and we were like, that pie was really good, and it really was. It was wonderful. It was yummy. And she said, oh, my goodness, you will not believe well, what I did. thank God. She said, <laughs> yeah, thank God. And I said, why? Why? She goes, well, I made two. And she said, I got them all done, put them in the fridge. And she said... <laughs> I brought you yours, and like then later I was looking at it because I was going to take one to somebody else. And she said, I went back and read the recipe again and realized I had missed something. And I said, what did you miss? And she said, I forgot to bake it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you didn't bake the key lime pie. We ate the whole thing. And she was like, I said, you mean like, had, okay. like, like raw eggs and, and stuff in it? And, and like, I don't do well with eggs, right? And we you gotta like, bake that well, stuff. That you gotta bake that stuff, mom. <laughs> we said, I'm sorry. That makes a lot of sense. Your stomach we really all hurt. Sick. All it, like the whole family, <laughs> all of you guys hurt really. I'm sorry. I'm trying to put yeah. your family. I'm sorry too. I've been at war for like two days. Me and my tummy. It has not been good. You forgot <laughs> to bake it. So you realize in that instance that it's really important to have every piece of the puzzle. Every yes. piece is really, that really... That was the missing link. It was, and it was very small. It was only a 20-minute little window of time, maybe, but it made the biggest difference. It did. Part. But we're going to go to Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to look at the creation, and we're going to look at what is it that's missing today that God intended to be a part of this creation puzzle. All right, we're going to read... From Genesis 3, verses 1 through 6. And it says this. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say that you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. 
God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. Everybody say die. Die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. Now, she must have just been a little ditzy, right? If that took all the convincing it took, she just decided, okay, I'm convinced. So she took from the tree with its beautiful fruit. It looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give. So she took some of the fruit, and she ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. From the very, very beginning, we notice that God creates man, and he creates woman. And from the beginning, we realize that they're very, very different. Let me explain kind of, you probably have the same thing in your life. When Brad and I got married, um, although I knew he was different from me, I thought that he should be like me in lots of ways. You say, how so? Well, I have a particular way I want every towel folded in my home. I have a particular way I want the dishwasher loaded every time. I have a particular way I want the bed made and the pillows put back. I have a spot. I want the laundry that's been worn to go after it's been taken off. Uh, is, it, can and, I, is this my part? No, it's okay. not. So after we got married, I, I couldn't figure it out. It was like, oh, hey, I know you're like in your 20s, but your whole life you've done this wrong. Let me show you how to fold the towel. We fold it up, and he's like, what? I don't get it. Who cares? And the next time he would fold them, he'd fold them wrong again. I'm like, oh. Wrong or different? Wrong. Or different? Wrong. Or different? Wrong. You're a dictator. <laughs> and so he'd be like, hey, let me do the dishes. I'm like, sure. He would do them, and then I'd come back in and go, what are you doing? You don't load them like that. You Who load says? them like this. Who, Who says? says? I'm like, oh, every woman knows how to load a dishwasher. It goes like this. Some women don't. Hey, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'd go through these battles. It would be like, sweetheart, why is there like a nasty pile of dirty laundry next to your side of the bed? That's where I collect it. He'd say, what's the big deal? I'm like, it's a really big deal. Just it's put convenient. it in. The hamper. You go to bed, sit on the edge of your bed, do your thing, declothe, you know, <laughs> and crawl on the covers and go to sleep. It's convenient. That Why take, take it all the way to the laundry done. room if you can just put it right there next to your bed? That's nasty. How many of you men are with me? That's yeah. nasty. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Well, there's a reason we're so different. So for the first few years of our life, it was very chaotic, kind of like a war zone, if you will. Um, nearly bringing divorce, honestly, which is not funny. But it was like a war zone because of little bitty things that we were different in. And as I began to ask God, Lord, you've got to change Brad, God began to show me, you got to change you. I created you both differently for a reason. Who cares how the towels are folded? You want them folded a certain way? Fold them yourself, right? He started to bend a little bit and started to try to learn how to do things the way I wanted. But here's the deal. God created us different for a reason. God created us different for a reason. And here we go. We go all the way back to Genesis, and we begin to see this story that we know so well when this idiot woman takes the apple, if you will, and she has a bite of it. You heard heard it here first. That's right. As if... That was not my line. Every man has wanted to say that, right? This <laughs> idiot woman, she can't wait or just go get another piece of fruit. She has to have that one. And we've always blamed this on the woman. We thought, you know, it's her fault. What an airhead. Why did she do that? She's talking right. to a snake. Exactly. Right? Yes. But I want you to notice at the end of this passage in verse 6, it says this. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her. The idiot! That's right! Somebody is right on! The man was right next to the woman! Listen to me, okay? This is about to hurt, boys. The serpent comes up to this girl and starts to talk. Now, the men were created with a warrior spirit. But if you notice in this passage, rather than Adam standing up and getting a hold of a sharp rock and taking the head off of the serpent and doing his job, he stands there and lets that woman talk.
talk and have a conversation with the enemy. The enemy was standing right in front of him, and he cowers back and watches this thing go down and then gives in and also takes a bite. And that's why when you go through the rest of the Word of God, it's placed on man for falling. It really wasn't placed on Eve because God created man to be that missing link. The mystery is revealed. God created a godly, authentic, real man to be that missing link in our society, in our families, who would stand up and fight for what is right in this culture. Man, that's good. I love it. A warrior spirit. I don't know about you guys. When a snake slithers into my yard. It's dead. It's a dead snake. Now, um, I know some of you are animal rights activists, maybe. And if you are, I will tell you, I'm sorry, I'm killing the snake. I agree to an extent. I, I do like black snakes because we like to kill the mice and they eat other poisonous snakes. So if we're going to be, you know, correct, politically correct, it, it, it is okay with me to have a black snake. It's not okay with me. But if me. a copperhead makes its way into my yard, I'm going to kill the heck out of that thing. We are protectors. We are not going to let a poisonous snake near our family. Why? Because we're warriors. I've got a story about a warrior I want to tell you real quick. This guy was a warrior. Of all warriors, he was a leader. And we should all glean from his wisdom. And this is back in the days of the pirates. How many of you guys like pirates? Swiss Family Robinson. All right, so, so there was this unbelievable pirate. He was, a, he was an incredible leader. He was a fighter. He was a warrior. And his, his seamen came to him and said, Captain, Captain! We are under attack. We're going to be attacked. There are two warrior ships. They're engaging upon us. And he says, Arr, mateys, we can take them. All we need to do is get the troops together. Bring me my red shirt, mateys. Me red shirt. And we'll fight them to the end and we'll take them down. So it wasn't very much longer after that. They had just utterly destroyed these two warrior ships. Just absolutely annihilated them in battle and they all came back together and they were celebrating and the very next day the same seamen they came to him they said captain captain you're not going to believe it we're under attack again and not this time there's not two warrior ships there are four warrior ships and we're under attack and he says no problem mates Arr, get me me red shirt and we'll fight them to the end so they get the red shirt, and he puts it on, and they start fighting, and they're fighting. And lo and behold, they took out the four battleships that were attacking them. And they said, Captain, we, we need to understand something. Why is it every time we say we're under attack, you want your red shirt? We don't understand. He said, Matis, I need to tell you something. This is leadership. If we're in battle, we're engaged in war, we're sword fighting, and I get wounded miserably wounded and I'm bleeding to my death. I don't want you mateys to see me dying. I don't want you to know that I am down. I want you to stay encouraged and keep on fighting here. They said, well then captain, is now a good time to tell you then that there are 10 warrior ships and we're under attack. He says, Arr. on the other hand, you might go get me brown pants. Because the man, the husband, the house band, the warrior was standing right there. And he let it all happen. He let it happen. He just stood there. He was passive. He gave up. He was a coward. But as real authentic men of God, we have to reject passivity. Listen to this. There's a sociologist from Yale by the name of Stephen Clark, and he says, men have a natural tendency to avoid social responsibility. Let me read that again. Men have a natural tendency to avoid social responsibility. This is something that he has gathered through just years and years and years of research, and he's just realized, hey, men, they just avoid it. In general, men, it's our natural tendency to just be like Adam. That's the flesh. That's the Adam inside of all of us men that we just are naturally passive. And if you don't think so, right now I want you to think of how many homes you see that are fatherless. Th think of how many men you know that have given up. They're not even there to raise their kids. 
Now, I'm going to step on some toes here, and I don't mean to, but, but, but 50% of the homes in America are dealing with divorce. Think about that. That means that there's 50% of the homes in America where the biological father is not raising the children now. Why is that? I'm not coming down and crashing down on you and saying, you're going to hell if you got divorced. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying because we know that there's restitution. God can heal that. He can work for it. He can, he can work through it with you, and, and he can give you a hope and a future. I know that. But what I'm saying is look at all the homes that have been greatly affected where children are not being raised by their biological father, the warrior man, because they were passive, and the men gave up their responsibility to love her unconditionally and to love those children and to commit, make that commitment and follow through with their responsibility. Think about it. It's true. There is a missing link in our culture and in our society. And it's a, an honorable man of God, an authentic man of God with a warrior spirit that will not give up what God has called him to do. It's rampant. It's everywhere. Robert Lewis says in his book, The Raising of a Modern Day Night, without a vibrant spiritual solution, this pattern of passivity grows effortlessly. It is now more and more prevalent, and it is breeding death to our culture. Why is our culture craving? Why is our society craving godly men? How does that affect the home? It affects the home in so many ways. You know, God didn't create women to have that same warrior spirit. And over time, we see so much happening with the women's lib movement. And God has honestly created us to be the nurturers in the home, to be the one who steps in and nurtures those kids. They, there is a balance between it, but because fathers and because husbands have not stepped up to the plate, women have had to step up to the plate. They've had to step up for them because women, for the most part, because God has created them with that nurturing spirit, they will do or die to raise those kids. And so they're the ones that had to then go out and get jobs and begin to work hard. They had to begin to raise those kids on their own. And we begin to see, and it's in, although we've seen it now for years and years and years, where we are in our culture now is a result of what has been happening for decades upon decades, okay? So where we are now is a result, but women were created to be safe and secure standing next to their husband, the one who was to be the warrior, the one who was to provide and protect and pastor that home. So many men across our world today have taken a back seat so that the women can pastor their home. How many times do you see women come to church without their husbands? And we commend you women that are here because that is incredible that you're willing to come without your man next to you. But what God intended is that the husband and wife together come into the house of God. The husband and wife together raise their children with the fear of God. Husband and wife together with the husband as the head leading that home. How many times back in the day, now I don't know about today, but back in the day, grandmas used to always say it this way. Kids would get in trouble and they would say, wait till your dad gets home. And kids knew what that meant. Now my dad would, my dad would take care of business, but so would my mom. My mom had a switch about the length of like my entire body. And she would always, I mean, she would take care of business, but if it got bad enough, she would say, you just wait until your dad gets home. And I'm like, I'm gone. <laughs> I won't be here when he gets here because I'm going to run away. Because you knew what that meant back in the day. Back in the day, that meant your tail is going to get busted. And I believe firmly in God giving you a place to have a good, firm busting on your behind. <laughs> Amen. The second thing that we need to give attention to today is that real men of God, authentic men of God need to accept responsibility. Look in Genesis, in Genesis 3, and how God lays out the responsibility of manhood to Adam. A will to obey, and, and here's, here's what he said. He said, don't eat the fruit, right? God established that with Adam and Eve and, and said, Adam, I want you to obey me. Don't eat the fruit, right? The second responsibility God gave Adam was cultivate and tend the garden. It was a work to do. All right, so we've got a will to obey, a work to, uh, to do, and the third was a woman to love. Who was that woman? Eve. So let's look at this real quick. The three responsibilities God gave Adam in the garden was a will to obey, that's don't eat the fruit, a work to do, that's cultivate and tend to the garden, and three was a woman to love, and that was Eve. Those are really the three responsibilities that God has given men to be authentic men of God. Well, guess what? 
Adam blew it. In every sense, Adam blew it. In every, on, in all, on all three accounts, Adam was absolutely and completely guilty as charged of all three, of, of abandoning his three responsibilities. They ate the fruit, right? He got kicked out of the garden, and there was constant strife between he and, and Eve. And guess what happened? For all the rest of time, we see a struggle in relationships because of the seed that he planted in humanity. But let's look at Jesus. He's called the second Adam. If you ever hear that term, that's, who, that's Jesus. He's the second Adam. What did Jesus do? He came to fix it, right? So he came as the ultimate picture of an authentic man of God to give us an example to look at. For men, we are to look unto Jesus to see what a real man of God looks like. He's our example. We're to follow him. We're to glean from him. Here's what he did. He came and fixed it. God gave him three responsibilities. A will to obey. That's his father's will. A work to do. Live a sinless life and die and redeem the lost. And three was a woman to love. And who's that woman? You're thinking Jesus didn't love a woman. Yes, he did. Who is she? The church. Good job, God. The kids said that. The church. The bride of Christ. Jesus came and made it right. And guess what? He passed the test on all three accounts. He obeyed the Father's will. He died on the cross for our sins. And he loved us unconditionally that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Real, authentic men of God are to accept the responsibilities that God has given us. A will to obey, a work to do, a woman to love. Third thing I want to talk about real quick is God calls us to lead courageously. Authentic men were designed to lead, not to follow. I'm tired of seeing coward men that will not own up to the responsibility that God has called them to. I know that I'm, I'm preaching strong here, but I'm telling you, where is the warrior spirit? Where's it at? We've got to pastor our homes spiritually. We have to protect our families physically, and we have to provide financially. And I know there's some instances where maybe some of those things can't, I mean, maybe you're confined to a wheelchair, okay? Let's, let's, let's just really get crazy here. I understand that maybe you may not be able to go out and, and really provide financially, but, but where's your heart, though? What, what, where's your heart? What about those of you who can and won't? And choose not to. There, there's a great saying. And it, and it talks about people who are pursuing education or knowledge. You know, we say this in leadership. We say, hey, there, there, there's a huge difference between people who won't read and people who can't. There's a huge difference because the people who won't read have no advantage over those who can't. It's the same difference. You know how to read. You know how to advance yourself? Do you know how many great books there are out there about being a great man of God? And are we reading them? Man, pastor, you're stepping on my toes. Good! Good! I want to. I hope I do. God is calling us to authentic manhood. The fourth thing today is that we have to accept the greater reward. What does that look like? For us men of God, what does it mean to accept the greater reward? Well, let me ask you this question. Why, why, why would it be worth it to you to pursue becoming an authentic man of God that meets the responsibilities that God has laid out in his word? Why would it even be worth your time? Let's go through some of these things. Hebrews 12, 1 through, through 2, 1 and 2 says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him he endured the cross disregarding its shame now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne Jesus expected the greater reward do you know what he was expecting in his mind when he was hanging on the cross and when he was dying a brutal painful death he was thinking about you and your sins and how in just a short moment of time he was gonna rescue you from you 
And you are going to have an opportunity to call upon the cross and call upon his name and be saved and cleansed and redeemed and forgiven and live in heaven forever and ever and ever and ever without, without shame, without guilt, without pain, without sorrow, without tears, with hope and fulfillment and a future. That's what he was thinking of. He was expecting the greater reward as the ultimate man of God hanging on the cross. I'm thinking of them, Lord. Even when he said, God, God, why have you forsaken me? Why, my Father? We have such a, a, a tremendous, unbreakable bond with one another, and you're turning your back on me? Why? Because your sin was upon his shoulders when he was hanging on that cross. He died for you because he loves you so much. That's the greater reward that was weighing on his mind when he was owning up to his responsibility as a man. Men get it done. They do what needs to be done. And they don't compromise. They do what's right all the time, no matter what, no matter how bad it hurts, they do it. Amen? They do it. 1 Timothy 4 and 8. This is one that we can cling to, men. Physical training, it's good. But training for godliness is much, much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. What am I saying? It's worth it. It is so worth it. What are some things that are going to transpire just automatically? What are some things that are going to happen for us men when we pursue authentic manhood? Think about this, an, an honorable name. What is a name to you? What does your last name mean to you men? What, is, what does your name mean to you? Are you proud of your name? Are you proud of your heritage? Are you proud of the lineage before you? Are you proud of your last name? Do you wear it with pride? Or are you ashamed of your name? What is it? I hope, I hope you are. A wife, imagine this, who looks at you with respect and with admiration. Think of it, men. When your wife looks into your eyes, what do they see? When they observe you, and how you do life, and how you lead the home. How do they perceive you? What do they think about you? What do they say about you? Wouldn't you want a wife who looks at you with respect and admiration? How about well-adjusted, responsible children who contribute to others and the kingdom of God? That sounds a little too perfect, I know. But, but think of it. Think of the results of a godly man, an honorable godly man in a home, raising up God-fearing children who love God with all their heart and love others all the same. Can you imagine the rewards? Can you imagine how great it would be to continually expect that because of your authentic manhood, you're raising godly children who are going to make a contribution to society and to the kingdom of God? Can you imagine, men, what I'm talking about? innumerable experiences of God's blessings. Think about God's favor on your life. Think about just the respect of other men in your community as you step up to the plate of authentic manhood. Think about the growing satisfaction that you have for your own life. Just to, to, go, to lay your head on your pillow at night and just to be pleased. You know the feeling, guys, especially... You know, if, if, you, if, you, uh, if your job is really physical and you work with your hands, maybe you've worked hard all day long. You're drenched in sweat. You're covered in dirt from head to toe. And, man, you have just worked your tail off. And you're on your way home. The sun's going down. You know that, that dinner's on the table. And, and you're exhausted. But you feel really good about yourself because you've earned it. You've earned to go home and to now rest and shower up, spend time with your kids, get some dinner, and go to bed, Right? I'm sure there's other things in your routine, but I'm saying it feels good, doesn't it? Well, think about how good it would feel to lay your head on your pillow at night and say, man, I just, I just totally knocked it out of the park. I just prayed with every one of my kids. Curl up next to your wife and you hold her hand and you, you pray over her. And, and, and I'll tell you, it's hard to fight when you're praying. It's really hard, men. You want to shut her up real fast? Father, I just love you, Lord. I thank you for this woman that you've given me. What the heck? What, 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 what's going on? What's going on? What's going on in here? Pray. Now, my grandpa says, don't go to bed angry. Stay up and fight. That's what he says. Stay up and fight. It's a joke, okay? It's a joke. 
Where are the real authentic men? I want to know where they are. I want to know if we have anybody in here that can link this chain together because you're the missing link in your family or in your home or in your community or in your church. I want to know who you are and where you are and when you're going to step up to the plate and be who God has called you to be. What matters is what your children need and what your wife needs and what society needs and what the kingdom of God needs. You can do it. And today is a brand new day. And your past is the past. I'm, you know, the comment I made earlier about divorces, listen to me. That, that's just, it unfortunately, just happens. I didn't say that to beat anybody over the head. Don't look back now and guilt. Oh, man, I just totally blew it. I'm a failure. No. You know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but it happens. But where are you today? Where does God have you now? What kind of a difference can you make today? Can you pray with your children today? Can you, can you, can you pray with your wife today? Can you, can you, the word says men that our responsibility is to love her as Christ loved the church. God help me. What did he do for the church? What did he do for us? He died. He died. <laughs> How much do you have to love somebody to die for them? If more men would just not quit and give it their all, you can do it. I'm telling you, you can do it. I want to talk for a minute to the women. I want to talk to those of you who are single, from the youngest girl in this room to the oldest that's still single. I want you to know that you are to look for an authentic man of God. You don't settle for less than God's very best. What Brad just went through is an authentic man of God. And here's what we do. Oftentimes in our society today, we're all about the outward. And we want a guy who looks good, and nobody wants a guy who's ugly. But women, listen to me. What you need to know more than what's on the outside and what that guy's doing in the gym is what that guy's doing in his word. We constantly are telling our children and any single girls in this room, you've heard it from us, what's his favorite scripture? If he doesn't have a favorite scripture, you need to run in the opposite direction direction because here's the deal when you put a ring on your finger it was intended to be forever and once that ring goes on that finger and you go into that home together your expectations will be really let down if you haven't held out for a man of God marriage is tough even with a man of God because it's two totally different people combining I want to talk to those single moms. You say, well, I'm a single mom. My husband is one who left, or maybe God called him home, and he's not here, and I'm raising my kids by myself. I want to tell you that there's still hope. You can look around in this room, and there are authentic men of God who can influence your children. Women, God never intended you to raise your kids all by yourself. You can find authentic men who can pour in. And men, if you see single moms, help those single moms out. Be an incredible man of God around those children. And married women, maybe your husband isn't that authentic man. Maybe he's not that man of God. Do you nag him and hope that that'll get him there? Tell him all the things he's doing wrong? It'll never work. You get on your knees and you begin to pray and you begin to call out and say, my man is going to serve God with all of his heart. God, I'm going to pray every day. I'm not going to give up hope. I'm going to believe for an authentic man of God. I'm going to encourage what he does right and shut my mouth when he does things that are wrong. I'm going to encourage him and lift him up and give him respect and give him honor and call out the warrior spirit within him. Women, we have a responsibility to encourage the men in our families, to encourage the boys in your home. Next week, we're going to talk a lot more about that as it's Father's Day. But I want to encourage you that we're not just speaking to men, we're also speaking to women. Our society is missing that man of God. You know, maybe there would be somebody in this room that would say, Pastor, I, I really, um, I, I need to know Jesus, this authentic the original authentic man of God I need to know him personally so I can make heaven my home I would say to you today you, you need to do what I did years ago and admit that you have fallen short that you have sinned against God 
as we all have. You need to invite him into your heart. You need to confess with your mouth that he is Lord. And what I want to do is I want to pray with you today. If you want to make that decision, I'm telling you it's the best decision you can ever make. And I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to pray that prayer as every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I'm going to count to three. And when I do, if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand where you're at. And I'm going to pray with you where you're at. So here it goes. Life change on three. One, two, three. Who are you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Will you pray with me today? Let's pray this prayer. Just, just agree with me. If you would. Father, I love you. I thank you for Jesus. I know that I've fallen short. Forgive me, I pray. Cleanse me and make me new. I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. I confess with my mouth. There is no one like Him. He is the only way to heaven. I dedicate my life today to live for God according to His Word. If you made that decision, I want to commend you. It's the best decision ever. And we celebrate with you today. For the rest of you that have been in this service today, you've heard this message. I want to speak to you for a moment. And I'm not just speaking to men right now. I'm speaking to everyone who is in some way affected by the lack or the missing link of an authentic man of God in your life. I want to pray a prayer that would cover each and every one of you. First, I want to start with this. If you are a man in this house and you want to fill the gap, you want to give everything you've got with that warrior spirit that God has given you, To begin to link your life up with that of Christ. To accept responsibility. To reject passivity. To lead courageously. To accept the greater reward. I want to know what warrior, authentic men of God are in this house. you lift your hands to God right now and say father it's me I can do it I can accept the call to be an authentic man of God if that is you this morning lift your hands to heaven say God it's me I accept the call I accept the responsibility I reject passivity I'm gonna lead courageously I'm gonna accept the greater reward father now in Jesus name I pray that you would empower each and every man in this house that is accepting the call with that warrior spirit. I pray that you would empower them with your presence, Father God, to boldly go where no and few men have gone before. And that is, Lord, into authentic manhood each and every day, God, that they would go deeper into their word, that they wouldn't stand idly by and let sin come into their home that they would protect their family, that they would provide for their family, that they would pastor their family, Father God. Help them, Lord. Give them that will to obey, that work to do, and that woman to love. God, we just pray, Father God, for every woman in this room. God, I pray for those single girls. God, I pray that they would hold out, Father, for an authentic man of God. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray that they would not be deceived as Eve was yes, deceived God. in the garden by a smooth-talking man. But God, I pray that they would look and wait for a man who is seeking the face of God, to look for a yes. man who wants the will of God, who is willing to follow the will of God, who is willing to work and do what God has called him to do, God, and to love others, God, unconditionally, God, and even be willing to lay down his life. God, I pray for married women whose husbands, yes. God, are not serving God. Lord, I pray right now, Father God, that you would encourage them, God, to not give up. 
God, we know that there is hope in you, Jesus. And I pray right now for every woman to be strong. God, I pray that they would have a spirit, God, of humility. God, to be able to be soft-spoken and to love their man and to encourage that warrior spirit to go after God with all of his heart. God, I pray, Father, for those moms, Lord, who are raising their babies by themselves. God, I pray, God, for a special portion, Father God, for them. God, I pray that you would encourage them today. God, I pray that men of God would surround them and begin to help them and encourage them. God, and begin to pour into their children. God, and I pray that they would not lose hope. God, but that they would continue to seek the face of God and wait for an authentic man of God who will follow hard after the heart of God. What's a good reason to give to God? Because he asked for it. Because he asked for it. Any other reasons? Uh, Has God been good to you? Yeah. How's he been good to you? Many ways. Many ways. <laughs> okay. So what are you going to give God this morning? 10%. 10% of everything you got? Yep. Everything? Yep. Okay, go sit down. <laughs> All right, so if that's your heart this morning, go ahead and get your checkbooks out. We've got the easy tithe giving. It's very easy if you've got your smartphones. You just you push in 918-223-8090. Just push in how much you want to give and just push send. It's that simple, super, super easy.